Welcome back. The economy is slowing. Capital is more scarce, but a tech shift continues in the way businesses design and complete major projects. Today, John Ford brings us up close with a risk-taking CEO whose software makes digital blueprints, John. Kelly, yeah. Andrew Anagnost is CEO of Autodesk, the $41 billion uh, market cap provider of design and collaboration software for engineering, construction, manufacturing, entertainment. He's navigating through a shift right now where higher rates are pressing customers to be more efficient, but they also need digital tools to stay relevant. Agnost is an aeronautical engineer by training. He worked on projects for Lockheed Martin and NASA. But before that, he was a troubled teen with a reckless streak. It took a nearly tragic high-speed car chase in high school to scare him straight. I was already on probation at that time, too. And it just, it was kind of a wake-up call when uh, I just said, I, I got to do something. I got to fix my life. And, and it, it went back to, uh, you know, you, you people, there's, the heroes in your life are sometimes the people that say things to you you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And I remembered a teacher. And, and it was, believe it or not, I, I'll tell you, in the moment when I was, when, I, when the car was spinning and, you know, and things were going bad, this teacher's, this teacher's voice came into my, my brain. The guy who leaned into my face in my Algebra two class and said, you know what? You can ruin your life all you want, but I won't let you ruin these other people's lives. And I remembered that because I had people in the car with me. And, and I, from that day on, from that night forward, I, got, I was straight as an arrow. Cal State Northridge, then a master's and PhD from Stanford, now a CEO, pretty straight. Andrew's challenge now is taking Autodesk's successful cloud build out, which he's led as CEO for the past six years, and adapting it for this dawning era of artificial intelligence and even deeper collaboration through the supply chain. This is an incredibly disruptive time we're in right now. Probably the most disruptive time we're going to see in our, our, our world of technology for a long time. And I'm fortunate in that Autodesk as a company has been preparing itself for the cloud for over a decade. So we already have a mentality around the cloud. So the guess that we're making right now is that everything in design is gonna be hyper-connected. AI is gonna be arbitrating decisions between designers, engineers, and construction professionals, or designers, engineers, and manufacturing professionals in ways that it just doesn't do today, all right? And that, that, that is a significant world that is going to allow us to do amazing things for our customers. Now, the stock did drop a bit after earnings a few weeks ago, mostly because Autodesk is transitioning from upfront to subscription billing. Anagnost says demand is strong and he's driving the company forward quickly, but carefully. Adobe-esque uh, if he pulls it off. Sure. I mean, when they made that transition, that gave way to a decade plus of, of impressive gains. But what an incredible life story. And uh, to all teachers out there, everybody, just remember the impact you can have. I mean, turning someone's life around. Yeah, he was always precocious and focused on areas like uh, when he was young, the moon landing happened. And that awakened his love for space and engineering. But it just took the right life circumstances to get him on the rails. What exactly? I mean, because we've spent a good amount of time on this show in this hour talking about AI mm. and the sprawl effects there. When it comes to design and manufacturing, what exactly could the vision look like for what it ultimately does? Could we be in a world where literally people don't design buildings or, or, or machinery anymore and it's all just done by a massive computer that kind of just knows what to do itself? Probably not that, but here's an example. If I can step back, uh, Notre Dame. Tragic fire four years ago. It just so happened that there were people doing an independent project, kind of taking images of the inside. They were able to use that to develop a digital twin of Notre Dame that now is helping them to renovate it specifically to how it was before. And they're able to see, Andrew was telling me, using Autodesk software where the walls are perhaps bowed out in ways that they weren't before. For because Notre of the, Dame he, specifically. Yes, for Notre Dame on. specifically. Wow. So you so, could actually make it better than it was before. Or you can also find the points in the design that have changed more quickly than if a human being had to do it. Hmm. If you're running AI on top of that with, you know, images, the digital twin, and then the, the construction work that you're doing. But he was even talking about um, automating certain needs for checks between suppliers along the chain of, of doing construction. If you can speed up a process like that by days, you can save a lot of money. That's incredible. John always brings us these great stories. John Ford, we appreciate it. it. All right, thanks, John.